we will create a new project to start with and to find an Arduino project just type Arduino in the search and you'll be able to find the templates provided with Visual Micro so here we'll select the Arduino Blink project example just to keep things simple and now we have to name our project and give it a unique name as normal so and you'll get warnings if the name's wrong and also ensure that the location is set to where you want to save your program it may be your Arduino folder or somewhere else so we can create our project this will automatically add the blink code for us so here we have the, the default view in Visual Studio and we can resize any of the windows using the handle between them as shown here we can also also hide using the pin which will put them vertically at the side which is always one to watch for in case you've tried to close the window and you've accidentally hidden it if you close them they'll, they'll go away until they're either auto opened or until you open them so we can see all of the windows available in Visual Studio on the view menu so you can see there's a, a lot of different choices the output window is the, the one you'll see auto load when you're building and uploading your code using Visual Micro and you'll see the drop down list with different items in now if you drag the top of any window you can move it around and redock it elsewhere if you hold the control key it'll hide the docking control until you let go of the control key sometimes it's in the way of trying to get it in the right position so as we can see we can also drag them onto the center of the dock which will turn it into a tab document or in any dock position So we can rearrange our windows as needed and we can also use the little drop down menu to perform all the same actions so we can float it where you could put it on a second screen for instance we can redock it and we can turn it into a tab document next to our code so it just depends how you want your windows laid out as to where you'd like to put them if you wish to reset your window layout just go window and reset window layout and this will put it back to the, the default layout with visual micro there are some toolbar auto visibility settings which will let you control all of the visual micro toolbars either auto, to load automatically or manually and here we can see minor manual and I've only selected three of them at the moment so we can add visual micro and now see it here on the toolbar so you can save yourself going into the menus as often for visual micro specifically Now we can also save our window layout so if we like this layout we can give it a name call it coding press ok now if we move something so that the window layout has changed and then reapply our layout there we go so you can easily have a number of different window layouts saved and just apply them as needed you can also move the toolbars around you grab the dotted area at the left this will let you move <coughs> the toolbars around and as you can see when they don't fit there's a little 
pair of buttons shown on the right hand side to allow them to expand. You can also add and remove buttons if you wish to customise them more to your needs just by simply checking the items available on and off. So you can <coughs> get all your windows and your toolbars all laid out just how you like them. Now if we go back to our solution, there's this We have all the files included that you can see here. Now if we switch to the folder view, we'll see all the files in the solution folder on disk. This will include any files not included in the solution. So if we open this in Windows Explorer, it's popped up over here. can see all the same files. Now you may have an external sketch or you may be adding files in from other locations so we'll, we'll add another INO file in, in Windows Explorer. And as you can see already on the left that's automatically appeared in Visual Studio in the file view. So we could edit our file outside of Visual Micro or just go back in and edit our code from there. Now in the file view it's visible. If we switch back to the solution view it's it's still not present so it's best to add the file to the solution. Which you can't do from the file view. You have to be in the solution view then right click the project you want to add it to and then go add existing item. So now we can see our secondary INO file in the solution as well. Here we could add some more code. And if we reference that code in our main INO file. A useful tip for navigation. You just highlight the, the code you'd like to go to and press the F12 button. You'll jump straight to it. So no more scrolling around your files. If you wish to go back, there's a, a backwards and a forwards button so you can actually move through your navigation steps one by one until you're back to where you want as well. If you highlight something and press Shift F12 it will show you all of the different places the code is referenced and allow you to jump to them easily. So if you've made a change it's very easily to very easy to jump through all the different views. There's also the in scope functions list at the top which allow you to jump around the code within a file with a simple list of all the function names. So there we have it. A quick start on the IDE and navigating it.